Welcome to all of you participants in the Careers and Enterprise Company conference here at Catania, London. And welcome to what I call a place called Hope. I've, uh, I've always wanted to do this, read the news, from when I was a little Dutch boy. So wow, here I'm sitting at the Al Jazeera news desk. Now before you can go and play, however, you'll have to be good and you'll have to listen for a little while first. You think you can do that? Brilliant. I've always felt and in conversations that the careers and enterprise company in Kitania are, are very, very natural bedfellows. Children, futures, aspirations, industry partnerships. And I've always felt that if, the, if careers education or careers awareness, as I'd like to think of it, is a science, that Kitania is the appliance of that science. If it's an art form, then that's great too, but it won't rhyme. So. And personally, I adore completely and, sub and subscribe absolutely to your latest developments, moving careers awareness, futures awareness, if you wish, to a younger age. And how good would it be if a part of your plans and developments a visit to Kizania for say 11 and 12 year olds becomes part of that practical application puts theory into practice so to speak but I also have a plea at this point well two actually firstly I'd ask of you to be brave and go younger still our research shows that we must but more of that in a minute secondly be creative, please be, cre be creative. Please don't be tempted to present younger children with a junior version of what the older ones get. They deserve better. And thirdly, there's always a third one, isn't there? Although I did say two. Please call it awareness and not education. The word education has been hijacked and now means schooling to many. And you can't really teach children about futures. You have to enable them to learn and to become more and more aware. Let me at this point tell you about our research, our global barometer of children's aspirations as it will become. About 12 months ago we did an analysis in, in London, at Kitania, London, and we took a sample of 61,000 children on a school visit, on their first visit, and we analysed what their first choices were. The outcomes were quite staggering, and here are some of the headlines. At age four, stereotypes are set. I'll use the aeroplane as an example. Cabin crew, age four, 70% girls, 30% boys. Pilot, age four, 70% boys, 30% girls. This is before children go to school. We're now doing some work with Professor John Siraj Blatchford to analyse how far down that goes. Does that go to the age of three, for example? Also interesting and a little disturbing that if you are a four-year-old from a deprived area, there is little chance that you would choose the aeroplane as your first choice anyway. So we have to bear in mind that children are multidimensional, not just gender, not just ethnicity, not just socio-economic context, but a multidimensional uh, uh, representation thereof. At age 14, our research shows there's been no change. The percentages remain the same. So what happens in those 10 years, or actually, what doesn't happen? The sample is massive. So the margin for error gets significantly reduced. Almost no change. Next, almost all the girls, regardless of their background, almost all the girls choose activities that might be deemed below their age range. Almost all the boys, regardless of their background, choose activities that might be deemed above their age range. Where does that come from? I sat in the park in Sheffield not that long ago and I was having a coffee and just observing 
families near an area that had a climbing frame. And almost unreservedly, when the little girl moved towards the climbing frame, the family would go, careful. And almost unreservedly, when the little boys moved towards the climbing frame, almost all the families would go, go on then, what's taking you so long? Go on, have a go. So in all these approaches and all these things that we do with our children, we need to know them well. We need to tailor what we offer, and we need to make sure that it's appropriate. Another part of our research shows, quite hearteningly, that good schools make the biggest difference. So us working with good schools gives us a better chance to do right by the children. And finally, one of the findings which I'm very pleased about is that the word purpose is associated with what we do. When I ask many children, why do you go to school? And the answer is, because you make me. I don't think that's the biggest turn on. But when a visit to Kitsania or working with a careers and enterprise company lights the spark that shows the child why, then we're getting there. We need that back. We need to deinstitutionalize our educational accountability, and we need to remember that our first and foremost, our accountability lies with the child. I'd love to work with you on that. And finally, our research shows that my mantra that children can only aspire to what they know exists is true. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're at Kidzania, not just here, but globally, our expert at opening windows of opportunity and widening horizons of aspirations. So please, 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 can we work together and can we be your appliance of science? In the interest of the children and for the greater good. And actually, it'd be good fun as well, wouldn't it? Brilliant. I'm now going to land a plane and make a burger and cut someone's hair and put out the fire and present a radio program and make a newspaper and operate on some poor soul. Thanks for listening. Enjoy today's work and enjoy the play. Be good and be brave. Ta-ta for now.